Good evening, folks. Thanks for joining us this evening on our regular meeting of council for Tuesday, February 13th, 7 p.m. I uh, would like to acknowledge we are meeting on the shared traditional lands of the Coast Salish people this evening. Looking for approval of our agenda. So Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Public participation. Thanks, folks, for coming, and it is your opportunity. Um, just so show of hands, how many are here on park and ride? <laughs> Good guess, huh? Um, we have a limited time at the beginning of our meeting uh, for 20 minutes public participation. So that covers off everything. So maybe if I could ask for those of you who are coming up and, and expressing your concerns, if you've heard it from somebody else, maybe just a hands up and echo. Um, and we'll try and get through this as quickly or as efficiently as possible. Uh, with all, anyone else with anything for public uh, information as well. And if we need be, there is an opportunity at the end of the meeting. By that time, everything will be addressed. We can go back to public participation as well, if you'd like. So with that, we'll start. Mark? Thank the you, Your Worship. The name and contact info, thanks. Yes, my name is Mark Holland. Um, I live in the Nanaimo, actually. I'm here representing many of the folks who live and work here comment on that in a second. So your worship, council, staff, thank you again. It's good to see you again this evening. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak to you about the OCP process. I want to congratulate you on the receipt of your current draft, the second draft, with a lot of input over the last year and a half. The community has worked hard on that on that draft, as you know, under the leadership of uh, Councillor Nault. And uh, staff, I know, at least lost at least one weekend getting that ready for you in mm -hmm. early February. Um, I'm working with a large group of stakeholders, nearly 50 of them, uh, here on the West Shore that are the people who build the homes and businesses, as you know when we talked about last time. Uh, my goal is to organize all their input on this draft OCP so it's an efficient mechanism to work together on this. I want to thank you for the, the revisions and the detailed notes. It was extremely, um, I was extremely grateful to see the detailed notes that your staff provided everyone on the changes between the first and second draft. Uh, the second draft was over 300 pages, so it was a really good way to be able to get through and figure out how the, how the comments were received. I appreciate that a lot. Um, we still have a number of concerns, and that's what I'm working on now. I'm wading through this next draft in detail um, and writing a report as I go for you, so you'll get a very detailed feedback from us uh, on that process. I'm incorporating comments from all of the different parties as we go here. I just want to reiterate the message I left with you last time. We're looking for a collaborative working relationship with you here. There's often a lot of conflict between the public sector and private sector as we hustle and build our communities. We see this process of this OCP not as a project that will end here shortly within this year. We see this as merely another step in the next 20 years of relationship we have as the OCP will be adopted and we'll be in here the next, the next day working on the implementation of that process. I personally met with at least a dozen of the main people here who are building in your community, talked through them, um, had an opportunity to get to know them. My path in life and career has led me to work with a lot of developers in a lot of different jurisdictions. This is an amazing group of people, and I'm not blowing smoke at them, I'm just telling you they are. Developers often come into a community and leave. I've been part of teams that do that. They come in, they make a buck, and they go. That is not the people that I'm working with here. They're your neighbors. They live here. They've invested a good deal of their wealth and their future here, and they care a lot about making it happen. They also have some rather unflattering things to say about their colleagues who have come, made a buck, and left, and not left something that is a contribution to the community. Um, looking ahead here, uh, each of the groups that I've talked to have a complex set of both a history, a project, a site, costs, etc. And so we're looking ahead now to understand what each of those things mean as well as some more general observations to the draft OCP. Um, in the next month or so, is it's going to take us that long to get through that detail because we want to work with you on the implement implementation implications. Um, I'll clarify things with your staff in advance. I don't want to waste any time on this process. Um, it is our understanding from conversations with staff that the OCP committee currently is suspended. Its role was to lead the visioning, and I'm not sure what the next group, the next step is. I presumed it would continue. We are completely comfortable working with the OCP committee, should you want to do something with us in that form, or come and work with council directly and staff directly. We remember in January that council had passed a, no, a motion that a workshop with the um, Committee of the Whole would be a good thing for all of us to have a shirt sleeve session that we can work with. We're totally comfortable with that and or any other option that you would like. Um, I, 
just want to note a couple of things on the details. When we get into that conversation, I already tell you we're going to be down in the numbers and we're going to be down in the details. I may have mentioned this last time, but I was doing some thinking about this and realized that it takes as long to become an architect as it does to become a surgeon. And just to build a single multifamily home, a multifamily building, a small one, will have upwards of up to 24 specialties that have almost that same level of education. It's very complex. No one person in that group really understands how an issue affects all others. So we're working our way through these to understand them as best we can. As development managers, we live in all of them all the time, so we have some insight, but it's still very, very challenging. Um, the vision is clear. The implementation implications aren't quite clear in this process, and that's what we want to work with you on. Um, I think any bylaw that has the scale of impact the OCP will have in the next 10 to 20 years deserves some really good due diligence on that. So that's what our intent. That's what our intent is: is to work with you so that when you face this bylaw for its final approval, you have the confidence of understanding what exactly the implications are of the decision that you're making. Uh, so I'll just I close, just reiterate this intent to work together. This group is putting real money and real time behind it. It's not a group whining here. They're really careful. They spent a lot of hours with me going through it, and we have more to come. We're planning another big working session on this draft within a couple of weeks, and what we hope to be is be ready in March to have that working session with you at your convenience, and I'll work with your staff to find a time that would work for you all for that discussion. So we look forward to that, um, and uh, in a way that we can come up with a good plan to all of us to meet our public interest in building COVID's future. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Mark. My name is Sheila Hamilton, and I am fairly new to doing things like this, so I hope you all can bear with me. Um, uh, I'm, I've lived in Colwood a couple years. I have a young family here. My partner is in the military and is currently deployed, and we both work. And when we were looking at where to live in Victoria, we picked Colwood because of the parking there, that that is integral to our ability to be able to work. And I've been chatting with other people on the bus at 6.30 in the morning as I commute into town for the last week. And a number of us drew the conclusion this morning that our families will leave Colwood if we take the parking right away. And I understand that it is very important for you guys to know that you have the option to rezone this land if you have another park and ride. But I think you're approaching this the wrong way around. I think it would be a more reasonable and transparent thing to do to start with having a new plan in place before you move forward on taking away something else that is so integral and valuable to our community. That you guys purport to want to be a family-friendly community and a green community, and a park and ride is central to those things. And I don't understand how you guys can consider moving forward on a project without a firm other plan already in place that guarantee that we can still achieve what we need as a community, that Colwood is a great place to live. It's a great place to raise our kids, and we want you to be able to stay here. And I, I really would encourage you guys to think hard about this, because I feel like we will lose a lot of young families if we make this decision. And those are the future of our city, and we need that, and we need to be able to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Uh, go. Jeff and then, or the young lady first, and then we'll do one, one the other. I know you're. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mr. Amy, we already had the earthquake today, so don't expect the room to move. I'll make this very short. About six weeks ago, I came to council and asked for endorsement on an application for a grant for ESS supplies, um, jointly with the town of Beaver Oil. I'm pleased to inform you that we did receive the grant of $25,000, and we'll be buying supplies for our storage container at Wanda Creeker Rec Center, cots and blankets and toiletries and stuff like that that people need when they evacuate. One of our volunteers was in Kamloops in the summer, 502 cots in the reception center he was in. So we got the grant. We are applying for another one for emergency operations center supplies. That will be done in probably two or three months. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Desiree Bond, and I live at 546 Delora Drive. And um, I'm here about the park and ride. 
one of the things I wanted to mention was right away in the newspaper when I noticed this article or, you know, there's nothing in it about the parking lot. It's actually kind of cryptic because I looked at the map and I couldn't make heads or tails of it. I even took out a magnifying glass and said to my husband, what are, where are they talking about? What road closure? So it was very difficult. And I think if it was spelled out clearer, the room would be fuller. Because like the young woman said, a lot of people use the parking lot. One of the things I also don't like is why redesignate the land? If you, you know, if your priority is to find a new place for the park and ride, and let's face it, there isn't one as convenient as where it is, but if your priority was to do that, then that should have been your first objective, not to redesignate the land, because the writing is on the wall that you absolutely intend to sell it. And I understand that um, the city needs money, and you need, maybe you think you need to sell the land. I also don't like the way you spun it, which is, you can have a park and ride or a wellness center, but Colwood can have both because there's a lot of room for a wellness center. We've got lots of space. You know, it's private land, so it's not going to make the city any money, but there is land for a wellness center. But there isn't really a convenient place for a park and ride. And if Colwood is going to be green, it's not just about keeping trees. It's about taking 100 cars off the road every day and having a convenient park and ride does that. Anyway, that's, that's what I have to say. Thank you. Any other members? Uh, we've got front row here. Thank you. My name is Ted Vermeulen, and I've been a happy resident of Colwood for the last couple of years. Uh, I happen to work with uh, the City of Victoria and Parking Services. Uh, I use your park and ride every day to get into work. There's no parking where I go. I look at, I, I was a little shocked to see this. I didn't see it in the paper. I just sort of noticed something on my window the other day. In my experience, <coughs> if you remove this park and ride, you're going to start to get sprawl. People will look for any nook and cranny as close as they can to the bus interchange to park their cars and get on the bus and continue to go downtown. As soon as you get sprawl, all the side streets will get filled up. Any business that is negatively impacted will come to council and say, I want you to do something about this. The next thing that happens is you need enforcement and to have active parking enforcement means you hire people that do that and uh, it results in tickets being given to the people that used to enjoy the park and ride. Uh, when the tickets are given, you will have this room full of people upset that we had the park and ride, it was removed, we didn't have an alternative to go to uh, that was convenient or reasonable. I mean, I've been thinking about where else you might have one. That's your business, not mine. But it sure works where it is. And as the young lady said ahead of me, there's plenty of options for a wellness center to be located, a new thing to be located. Um, I strongly encourage you to rethink your position on this park and ride. Thank you for your time. Good evening, my name is Emily. I have been a resident of Colwood for, oh, let's say 20 years. <laughs> Grew up in the city. Um, I would like to begin by saying I completely agree with Desiree on the, it might be a bit harsh to say underhanded, but I'm gonna say underhanded <laughs> way that some of these, this information has been going out. Like I will start with um, the memo FAQs about the park and ride that was posted on the City of Colwood Facebook page today. One of the items, let's see if I can do, cannot recall which one at this moment, said you have until Friday to send us in a written uh, uh, disagreement about, about what you want to say. 
that was released today. Was the FAQ written prior? I don't know. I don't have the answer to that question. I will say that I have been a five days a week user of the park and ride for five years. I used to use it to go to college, college out in Camosun. Now I use it every day to go to my office downtown. Uh, when I was in college, I started class at 10.30 in the morning, so I would be on the bus at 9 in the morning. And as the gentleman before me said, um, uh, removing the park and ride will result in sprawl. The sprawl is already there. <laughs> if you go past the park and ride at 9 o'clock in the morning, there's people in the designated Juan de Fuca Rec Center um, spots. There's people along the side of the road up to Belmont Park. And there's people in not actual spots in fire lanes. <laughs> it's already out of control. It needs to be a bigger park and ride, not a lack of park and ride. I also take issue with point nine in this memo put out today, FAQ, whatever it's called. Um, where will current park and ride users, blah, 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 where will per current users of the park and ride park if the current site changes? And this states that BC Transit has identified a number of additional sites in Colwood Langford on Highway 14. Okay, if you're gonna put it further down the road in Highway 14 in View Royal, you have to know that the crawl begins bare minimum from the intersection of Souk Road and Machosa Road and goes all the way to the entrance to the highway. So if you put it further down the road in View Royal or in a different Colwood location that I can't imagine where that would be, um, you're just gonna be adding more traffic for another kilometer. Every single morning when I'm going to work, 7.20 in the morning, the longest part of my commute, which is only 10 kilometers, and sometimes takes me two and a half hours, is from the park and ride to Helmican. So that's what, four kilometers to Helmican? And it can take me 30 minutes. And then past that is the shorter part of the commute where they're ripping up a highway and somehow that takes less time. So I would agree with those who spoke before me and urge you to reconsider and try and find a solution to expanding the park and ride and a viable new location for the park and ride if it is completely necessary to move it. Thank you. Good evening, Your Worship, Council, and staff. My name is Matt Pulin. I'm one of the partners at 284 Belmont. I um, just want to quickly touch on uh, our item on the agenda this evening. You have. You can step aside. Thank you. Just for the rest of you in the audience, we have a council member who lives in the proximity of that development, and for those reasons, he is not privy to conversations or discussions that go on. So thank you, Matt. Yes, thank you. Um, so as you are aware, the, the property was rezoned uh, approximately about a decade ago uh, to its current zoning. Um, and over the last 10 years, there's been a number of versions of plans that have sort of come across. Uh, the latest being approved in 2015, which was a four-story, 48-unit uh, condo building. Um, development permit, um, had recently expired in April of this past year, in April 2017, uh, two months prior um, me taking possession of the property. Um, the past six months prior to that, I'd been working with staff, uh, the lawyers to, before I even took possession, to register the covenants that came along with that rezone. The uh, half acre, or the half property in the rear going to park dedication, and the tenure covenant on the rental restriction of the building. Um, during that time, I was also meeting with the neighboring condo strata development. I met with about 10 or 15 of their owners just to give them a bit of an update of what we were doing. We weren't making any changes to the plans, um, but while we were there, listened to some of their questions and some of their concerns. And from that, we were able to make uh, two, two changes that were their biggest concerns. One was the drive aisle was originally on their property line. Uh, we then were able to move it more to the center of our property, uh, limiting noise and sound and um, odors. And we also had a, a pathway that went down their property line um, for our residents to get to the back. Uh, we also relocated that to the opposite side of the property uh, to 
to give more privacy for the for our neighboring uh, condo building. Um, after we met with uh, the neighbors and staff, knowing that the, the, the development permit was expiring, we, we continued on, um, worked with our architects, and resubmitted our development permit and variance in September of 2017. Um, the morning of November 20th, uh, the day that the report was to be sent to uh, the APC agenda, we were notified that there's another variance that uh, we now have to apply for in that side yard setback. Um, caught me a little off guard being that this had been approved once before a few years back and that was, uh, wasn't was an issue or wasn't even addressed at that time. But knowing this, I met with uh, the strata president and the neighbors again, um, just trying to make sure that we can have an agreement You know that we're both happy with. We're going to put landscaping, shrubs, and garden, and everything up that side wall just to make sure that it, it limits um, that concrete there. And also actually looking at, I, I noticed there's some plans in front of you, the, the, the visual that's looking down on it, you'll see how far our building is actually set back off of the, the property line, on the front property line, and actually how much further back the actual concrete wall of that parkade in, a, in reference to our neighboring property. The front unit of our neighbors, when sitting on their patio, the concrete wall will actually be behind them. And when they're looking out to the front and to the to their right, there'll be a landscape, garden, and a shrubbery area. So that rock wall, that concrete wall actually is in, gonna be in their, in their back. Um, and speaking with staff, just recently too, one of the other things we want to enter into if uh, colleagues interested is a housing agreement which will secure this building as a rental uh, and we won't be strata petting and this will stay as a rental building. So thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Looking at the time on the clock, we are at the 720 time frame. Is there anyone that has a last comment at this time? Otherwise we have to move and wait till Peter, thanks. I just want to quickly comment that uh, Olympic View would really like to get started on their development, and we've been in process for over a year and a half now. Um, we've got a great site adaptive plan that we've been working on with staff, and we look forward to starting soon. Thank you. Thank you. There might be room for the, the other fellow if you. <laughs> just trying to get as many through as we can. Sorry, I'll be, I'll be uh, succinct here. My name is Kyle Schick. I'm uh, 11227 in North Saanich. I'm the project manager for uh, Matt Pulin's job. And I just wanted to speak specifically to that uh, concrete wall. When the application came in, it was 12 feet high out of the ground. Uh, we've since reduced that by four feet by adding a glazed guard to add some visual transparency there. So we felt we've tried to take some of the comments that staff have made even as late in the game as it was um, to heart and try to, you know, uh, try to uh, limit the impact to the residents um, adjacent to us, but consider, please consider the fact that if that side yard setback variance doesn't go through and we have to then push the, <coughs> excuse me, push the park gate a full story below, uh, we'll be impacting far more units on our building looking at uh, the back cliff because of all the excavation that we have. We have a 10 meter, 11 meter uh, slope from front to back. So we have uh, significant grade challenges to deal with. Thank you. Thank you. And the lady in the middle there, thank you. Mayor, councillors, thank you. Uh, my name is Norma Stewart. I live at 3254 Normark. Um, I'm kind of here about the park and ride, but on a different basis of it. Um, it was announced at Visions West Shore that when we did our road systems, we didn't have that opportunity to look into the future and see how our community was going to grow, which has limited us on how we can make our roads wider. I'm a little concerned that taking away this property is also limiting us on what we can do with the Wanda Fuca Rec Center in the future. Tonight was just announced that a committee was put together for tourism sports. We may need some more property and that parking to be able to expand our rec center and the facilities and recreation that we may want to put forward in the future for a lot of these big events that might come our way. 
So I just wanted everyone to think it's not always just about the everyday park and ride. It may be about our future and how we can promote the community with our sporting events. Thank you. Thank you. And with, and with that, folks, we're going to move ahead into our regular agenda. Uh, next item is Mayor's message. And uh, for myself, I have just an announcement. Uh, council wasn't able to all participate last week. We had, uh, we were the recipient for the second year in a row from Coast Capital Insurance, which is also Western something or other. They they go by as well. Um, last year we were the recipient of five thousand dollars that was uh, contributed to the upgrades and the water splash park that's being put in at Colwood Creek Park, and this year we. As part of that succession, we were awarded another $5,000 through their organization, and that will go through to create and build, and, or towards building a pergola and uh, sun space down there in the park. So uh, we're very appreciative to the partners in the local community who saw fit that this was a valued park for our residents, and uh, we were um, happy to receive that uh, last week. Anyone else from council with anything? Councillor Dave? Thank you. Uh, one week tomorrow at the Family Court and Youth Justice Committee, we'll be having a presentation, uh, which is open to the public by BC211, uh, which is an online uh, text and uh, website uh, resources to help anyone with needs, whether it's a homeless shelter or um, addictions treatment or... Uh, just uh, finding out where your local services may be. Uh, senior services as well um, is a new service that's available uh, throughout Vancouver Island. And if you'd like to find out more about it, you're welcome to join us at noon. Thank you. Anyone else? No book bash? Oh, yeah, there is. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, nobody's invited, though. Uh, there's a book smack tomorrow at uh, Royal Bay uh, High School. Uh, happening at 11.30 in the auditorium. It's, uh, there's already 300 students attending, so uh, I don't think any of these people would be brave enough to uh, go to that. <laughs> but it is happening in the community tomorrow. So maybe one, tell them what a book slap is. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, book smack is basically, uh, it's run through the Greater Victoria Public Library. It's where we have three librarians come and they do presentations for two minutes on a book and trying to convince the audience to actually uh, read that specific book. And so the three librarians actually compete against each other. Um, so it's quite an entertaining afternoon. There, uh, just so you know, we, uh, the Great Victoria Public Library does that on average twice a month. Uh, it's usually either at the Belfry Theater or uh, we try and do it at our local branches as well. Uh, this is an opportunity for uh, Royal Bay High School students to actually experience it. So uh, we're looking forward to uh, putting that on tomorrow for them. Thank you. Uh, with that, shall move on to adoption of two sets of minutes for this evening. One from the regular meeting of council January 22nd and the other the public hearing bylaw number 1681 from January 29th. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, two minutes. Uh, Two sets of minutes for a receipt, please. Urban Force Bylaw Task Force from January the 11th and the public hearing bylaw number 1681 from January 29th. Move for seat, Your Worship. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, one piece of correspondence uh, before us in regards to an upcoming discussions, probably at UBCM for 2018 from the town of Spalm. Spal Spalumchin? <laughs> That's one of those ones that always got me. Move for seat, Your Worship. Thank you. Seconder, please. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. New business, planning and land use, recommendation, development variance permit application DVP 1702542824, Belmont. And thank you. I will be declaring you a potential conflict of interest. Away. Duly noted. And staff. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just wanted to make uh, note of the fact that the applicant has provided this additional information in the form of some uh, building uh, exterior elevations. 
Uh, I believe it's to show the uh, improvements made since the application was forwarded to the APC. Um, I also understand there's been some communication between the applicant and members of council with respect to uh, increasing the duration of the housing agreement regarding um, uh, rental housing. So right now there's a 10-year housing agreement uh, requirement on the title of the property and I believe the applicant has offered to ex extend that uh, to in perpetuity but I'd uh, leave it to council to decide whether uh, you'd like to ask questions directly of the applicant in regard to that. Um, and with that, I would leave it to uh, the council liaison to uh, introduce the item. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. At the uh, Advisory Planning Commission uh, meeting held on December the 13th, the uh, commission heard an application that's requesting, um, with a request to amend the uh, Colwood Land Use Bylaw Number 151 in order to permit the construction of a four-story, 48-unit rental apartment building. In essence, the following variances um, are requested. Uh, a, a relaxation of the minimum allowable number of off-street parking stalls for residential multifamily use from 1.5 per dwelling unit, plus one for each 100 square meters of building floor area, et cetera, um, to 1.1 1 .1, uh, per dwelling unit. B, relaxation of the uh, minimum allowable depth of a 90-degree off-street parking stall from 5.8 meters to 4.5 meters for not more than 20% of the total number, number of required off-street parking stalls. And finally, three, the relaxation of the side yard setback of the principal building from three meters to zero meters for the portion of the building on the east side of the property where the underground parkade is located above grade in accordance with the elevation plan A1.5 elevations north and east. Staff explained that a similar parking variance was issued in 2015, but it expired in 2017, so the applicant is simply applying for a new permit similar to the original, with the exception of the request to expose a portion of the underground parking structure. Uh, staff are supportive of the proposed parking variances listed uh, as items A and B, but uh, do not support the side yard setback variance proposal uh, proposed listed as item C. Um, the advisory planning commission, uh, based on the information that was before them, uh, agreed and received uh, some feedback from neighbors in terms of the aesthetics of the uh, concrete wall. Um, and therefore, uh, we're sympathetic to the applicant in terms of uh, the uh, parking variances. Uh, but not so much so um, when it uh, related to the um, side yard setback being eliminated. Um, having said that, uh, the applicant is, uh, has submitted some new drawings uh, with uh, some changes to, uh, um, to some, some touches along the uh, side yard that uh, was the most contentious. Um, before I make a motion, perhaps we can have some discussion, Your Worship, um, in terms of whether we want to uh, uh, make a decision tonight about the side yard setback or uh, with this new information, including the information on the rental um, uh, um, agreement that uh, was alluded to, that it may be worthwhile uh, as opposed to denying the application, but rather to send it back to the APC uh, for further consideration, specifically um, uh, with regards to item C, which uh, which they uh, weren't comfortable with. However, they might be with the uh, new information that has been um, provided. I'm just going to look to staff. Is it is it something that would have to go back to APC uh, for further discussion, or is this something that the proponent works with staff on in an ongoing? I, Your Worship, it would be at Council's discretion as to whether the decision is made tonight by Council or whether it be referred back to the APC. If the application was referred back to the APC, staff would assist by creating a, a cover report to um, summarize the additional information. Councillor Day. Thank you. Uh, just it would be my preference to have the, the it go back to the APC simply because um, details presented uh, at the table uh, are, th I 
found in the past sometimes really benefit from a full evaluation through staff. Uh, so more than anything, uh, I, I really prefer to see um, the full explanation uh, of the changes and what those uh, implications are uh, because there were a number of uh, issues mentioned um, tonight including uh, you know views from some of the units if uh, at the back with additional blasting requirements and uh, I would really prefer to have staff um, confirm um, all of the details. Thank you, Worship. I, uh, I would tend to agree. I think the applicant has done uh, some due diligence here to address some of the concerns that uh, the neighbours have had in terms of the aesthetics, and I think um, to give them their due, that, um, that uh, they be allowed to present that to the uh, Advisory Planning Commission uh, that outlines the, the changes um, uh, that uh, have been made as a result of the input from uh, from the neighborhood, and then the uh, advisory planning commission can uh, can have another kick at it uh, based on the new information and the revised drawings. And uh, um, I, I'm hearing a new recommendation coming up. I'll uh, I'll move that we refer this back to the advisory planning commission. Second. Any further discussion? Yeah. Uh, I have a couple questions. Uh, can you tell me C? Uh, was uh, the relaxation from th from three to zero? Was that part of the original um, DP? And and it, has it changed? I, I mean, I think I heard that from from the proponent that that was one of the changes, or was that not one of the changes? The development permit that was issued for the property to a um, previous owner did include that uh, a, si a similar condition for the side yard. Um, I'm sorry, of three or of zero? Of zero. Yeah. The, uh, the the big change on site with was with respect to what has happened next door. Uh, since then, there's been a um, multifamily building uh, developed, and um, I think uh, that's potentially given uh, staff uh, pause to look at it a little bit more closely and determine that the variance was required. Um, uh, really, we're talking about the setback requirements having the intent of managing uh, the interface between properties and, and that's why it was seen to be important in this case. Okay. Um, I, yeah. I, 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 struggle, I struggle with goalposts sort of moving and, and I understand that the, this DP um, changed or uh, expired, but I guess I, I start wondering what if it hadn't and they had started construction and zero worked before but zero doesn't work now. And I guess I'm just trying to grasp my head around that. The, sec the second uh, question I have for you is I'm looking at time. If it goes to APC, when's, when's our next APC and when would this come back to council? Is that it? Anybody? <laughs> well, tomorrow's our next yeah. APC. Oh, okay. However, so is it going uh, to so We would probably bring it to the um, March meeting. Would that be... Uh, your worship, we, we try our best to get it to the next available meeting, which would be March. Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, just to clarify, so it will make tomorrow's APC meeting? No. March. It will not make. No. To, so, no. it will go to March's, and then the delay will, then after March, it'll go to council. Okay. Thank you, Sir, Your Worship. <laughs> Councillor Martin, Martin stole my question, but. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just wanted to throw out a comment there and just to remind everyone that this is a 48 uh, unit development and it's all supposed to be rental. And um, you know, they're, they're asking for a variance, but they're not, these units are not going to be sold for profit. And I think that's something really worth noting is that I do believe we need more rental units in Colwood. And if, if it happens that we can work out a rental agreement in perpetuity, that's, that's really an asset to the, to the community. And I think it's something worthwhile to discuss at the APC rather than denying tonight. Thank you. With that, uh, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And we need to retrieve Councillor Melton.
Thank you. Uh, now moving on to finance and administrations. Item 6.2.1, a report from Director of Corporate Services in regard to the Joint Colwood and View Royal Emergency Support Services Program Agreement. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the Emergency Support Services Program Agreement that we have jointly with the Town of View Royal has been in place uh, since 2007. It's a five-year agreement that we uh, renew usually in the summertime of the fifth year. We've had a little bit of a delay because we've been revisiting the original contract, making sure that it's meeting all the current needs and covering all of the things that we learn as each year goes by and we know a little bit more about what we can do and what we can move into or uh, make sure we're still in compliance with legislation. So the provincial legislation does require local governments to have an emergency plan and the emergency program that we put in place has to make sure it has a program that provides for food, clothing, shelter, transportation, coordination of first aid services and so on uh, for our community. So the agreement that we have with View Royal is managed actually through View Royal who has a full-time uh, emergency management officer. It's very helpful. It's a very successful program. Uh, you heard earlier this evening our emergency program coordinator uh, and let everybody know that we were successful in our $25,000 grant application to buy even more supplies to stock our emergency containers. Uh, so uh, for tonight, what we're asking council to consider is uh, reaffirming its or re-endorsing its in continuation of the program with View Royal, um, reaffirming its consent to allow this joint agreement between the two municipalities, which is provided for in the community charter, um, looking for a renewal of the five-year agreement uh, to which the annual costs in each of the five years uh, will be held at the 2017 rate, $6,885 a year with View Royal continuing to manage the program and working with the Colwood and View Royal Emergency Support Services volunteers. And the mayor and CAO will be authorized to sign that agreement. The emergency program coordinator did say that he's more than happy to answer any questions that council may have on the agreement. There is a copy of it included with the report that clearly shows the changes to the agreement, which are very minor in nature. So we're just looking for council's continued support. Move the recommendation, your worship. Second. Discussion, council? Councillor Martin? Thank you. Um, so uh, in your financial implications, you mentioned between 2012 and 2017, the program basically ranged from $6,000 to 6800 which is basically going to be my assumption that it's just inflation that we sort of went up every year on. Uh, with, with the new agreement between um, 2017 and 22, we're remaining at $6,885 without any calculation of inflation or, or anything along those lines. So in actual fact, the dollars are going down as we, as we work towards 2022. Is there any reason for that or is there a reason we didn't calculate inflation into that? We'll ask our emergency program manager to answer that because he's been working with the team. Yeah, the, um, the agreement in place, they have found they have not been spending all the money, and so they felt that there was no need to increase it every year. Um, a lot of the costs are borne by other agencies for training and stuff, and so they don't feel it's necessary to have a, an annual increase in the, uh, in the agreement. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Day? I have a question, just a, a comment. Uh, I just wanted to thank the emergency um, services uh, for the services that they do provide, that they've been a leader in British Columbia over the last summer, and it's very nice. We see them out at almost every event that we've had, and it's uh, just really good to know that you're there. Thank you. Just one comment on the tsunami warning. We had 70 people at Wanda Fuqua Rec Centre that were evacuated that we were looking after for Colwood and View Royal. So, thank you. Any other comments from Council? Uh, seeing none then, I need somebody to uh, move and second. Oh, yep, uh, all those in favor? Opposed, motion carries. Um, moving on, 6.2.2, report on building inspections and bylaw services, request for waiver of noise bylaw for royalty productions. They are are going to be in our neighborhood from February 15th through 17th, filming at Hatley Castle. Move the recommendation, uh, Your Worship. Seconder? Second. Second. 
And just before we call the question, I do want to let you know that uh, we, the only uh, notification that I believe the city received was accolades actually to say uh, thank you for embracing film industry in, in the municipality, that it displays Colwood in a positive way and the potential of injecting income and opportunity to the community is well-founded, so thank you. With that, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, 6.2.3, memorandum in reg uh, Director of Corporate Services, candidate orientation session and council orientation session <coughs> budget. Tenant dates are set for September and December 2018, respectfully. respectively. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, tonight, we just wanted to bring to council's attention and the public attention, because it is an election year this year, uh, that staff are proposing to engage a consultant later in the year to hold two types of orientation sessions for us. One of them is going to be a candidate orientation session, which is intended to help anybody who is considering running for council and is nominated uh, to come to the workshop and learn a little bit more about what the job entails, what the expectations are, what the time commitments are, and really have a good understanding of what the role of a city councillor or a city mayor is. Uh, and the second part of the session would be after the election, it will be a uh, newly elected, whether you've served previously or not, the newly elected 2018 council orientation over an, uh, one evening and the next morning. Uh, and this is going to provide um, more of an understanding, especially for the new members, of the roles and responsibilities of council, the legislation they need to be aware of. Uh, the, it, they'll get a bit of what the city has going on and the city's working on, but it really is more about you know, who they are as elected body and how it works and what the rules and procedures and things like that are. So um, we could have just built this into the election budget, which is being presented to council in the very near future at Committee of the Whole Budget meeting. But we wanted to be very upfront with staff that this is just a little bit of additional funding that we do have in this year's budget in the amount of $2,000 to cover the, the three sessions um, for candidates and elected council. Councillor Day? I'd just like to move the recommendation. Any discussion? Questions of staff? All those in favour? Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, moving into bylaws, looking for third reading only. This is for Colwood Land Use Bylaw Number 151-1989, Number 161 for Seafield Road. Move third reading. Second. Any discussion? Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, 7.2, Bylaw Number 1717. Uh, I'm going to go to staff before we put this one out there. You have some information first off. Brent? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just wish to um, introduce the fourth reading and final reading of this bylaw 1717, bring about a little bit of clarity maybe to uh, some of the discussions that have come forward and to as well reiterate some of the items that have been brought forward tonight. So the purpose of bylaw 1717 is to close the portion of Ocean Boulevard and to remove the dedication of the area of land from road, um, so removing the portion of dedicated highway. The bylaw, if given fourth reading tonight, does not change the use of the land, merely how the land is titled, road or lot. The city posted public notice in the newspapers required by the community charter. We've heard tonight that the final t time for that notice was Friday. That was in regard to the rezoning of the land. The fourth reading public notice and timing for that was a previous Friday ago. So we did provide public notice as required by the community charter and we sent out specific notice to BC Transit, the Ministry of Transportation and interested utility operators. The notice is in regards to the removal of the dedication of road for this land area, which is the limit of consideration for bylaw 1717. BC Transit has provided a reply they wish that the area to remain in use as a park and ride facility until such a time as an alternate site has been procured and ready for the transit service and have not stated that they are opposed to the closure of this portion of dedicated highway and that they are actively working to secure an alternate site. The city does not have a current contract for use with BC Transit. The utility operators have also replied that they are not opposed to the closure and there may be a need to relocate some services at the expense of the city or developer 
and or enter into agreements for those services to remain in place. There are no issues in regards to meeting the requests of the utility operators. Members of the public, including West Shore Park and Recreation, have commented. West Shore Park and Recreations have stated that they are concerned over the potential impact of their present parking and the potential to stress senior and public users of the, of the facility in regards to available parking. West Shore Parks and Rec have advised that there were multiple discussions when this area was enabled as road and they were attached and included as known in the memo prepared, um, which is part of your package tonight. The public comments are mixed as many deal with the loss of the park and ride and the eventual potential use of the lands. Due to this mix of information, I direct you as well to the memo and its attachments contained in, the pack in your package tonight. The general note from the public is that there should be no change in use, either until an alternate is known or no change of the use, period. This bylaw to close a portion of road dedication does not change the use of the lands. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that, I am going to call out uh, final reading for bylaw number 1717, consideration of final reading uh, for the road closure and dedication removal bylaw for a portion of Ocean Boulevard, the Juan de Fuca Park and Ride, bylaw number 1718, 2018. Move final. Second. Discussion? Thank you. Uh, so I have actually been taken aback uh, by the amount of people who have uh, reached out to me to, uh, to say that they want the park and ride, that the park and ride should stay. Um, I was not expecting as, as an engaged community as, as we have had regarding this. Um, it, it's, in saying all that, I am still going to be voting in favour of, of tonight's motion and the reason I'm voting is because it's just cleaning up some housekeeping measures. We're still going to have to take a secondary step towards uh, public engagement if we were to ever move towards moving that park and ride to do anything else. Uh, and I, I, from one, would seriously look at uh, that we would need to have another park and ride in place before we shut that down. Um, but for myself, I feel very comfortable with, with cleaning this up this evening and, and moving it out of highways and into, uh, into a lot. So I will be supporting it this evening. Any other comments from Council? Councillor Dave? Thank you. Just to clarify for, for the public, um, I do understand the, the points um, both uh, made by Council and staff, and, and I appreciate that um, from the city's perspective, this is kind of the appropriate uh, way to treat this land. It, it, it is a lot. It's not a road anymore. It's just being used as a parking lot. Um, I, I do and have felt from the beginning that um, this was kind of unnecessary because until such time as uh, we had other options uh, laid out or a reason to make this change, um, I didn't feel that it was necessary. I, I do understand the, the reasoning behind it and, and uh, there certainly is a discussion um, that will continue. Uh, I, and I know that um, all of Council will have um, uh, an open mind uh, in terms of uh, whether or not it will be a good <laughs> idea to change the use of this particular lot. Uh, from the park and ride that it is right now to maybe something else in the future and uh, perhaps the citizens of Colwood will um, feel inclined that that's a good idea. Um, I, however, am not um, supportive of this change at this time um, as I have been sticking with um, my same opinion. Uh, I did believe that there would be, um, a f it would generate a considerable amount of debate uh, in the community and uh, I am hopeful that um, new and improved facilities will become and be made available. Um, I am not privy um, yet and uh, even if we knew we couldn't uh, tell you yet because of course when uh, land is being acquired uh, for the purposes of a park and ride or anything else, uh, we're not allowed to talk about that till after it's done. So. 
just to explain that uh, I do respect the opinions around this table, um, but my opinion has not changed, and uh, I feel that this is just not something that I would do at this time. Thank you. Anybody else? Just clarification, staff. At the present time, that is nothing more than road allowance as far as, like, there's no lot, there's no, nothing identified? Uh, thanks for the question, Your Worship. That, I think, is some of the reasons for some of the questions that have come up tonight, that it wasn't clear in terms of the area. It's an undefined area. It's all just wide open road. So that's exactly right. It is just open road allowance from the Juan de Fuca uh, Parks and Rec portion of the road all the way to the other side of, the, of Souk Road. And that was a result of the intersection that had been realigned at that location some number of years back? Yes, from the information that I have, it's from discussions for that intersection, which take place all the way in 1999, 98, and 2000, moving forward. So somewhat, as we are ordered up by the province to identify assets in the community, that is kind of an unidentified asset of sort, if left as, as a, a road allowance? Yes, uh, road, road allowances are typically considered depreciating assets because the infrastructure on it is depreciating over the course of time. So as land, it becomes an asset that may have a different consideration applied. So what we're doing here is, is defining that, that property then and giving it a definition. Very much so and allows us to then look at it in different ways, only one of which is an alternate use. The other one would be further agreement. Thank you. Um, I sit on BC Transit, Victoria Regional Transit, and as Councillor Day has said, that uh, I know that they are actively, they have been working for a number of years on identifying uh, areas where more park and ride can be uh, established. And, you know, as, as she has said, that uh, even knowing that they were going to open one tomorrow, we couldn't talk about that till they make the announcement and that they get it underway. But it has been made clear, and we understand it to be clear, that there would not be a change of use on that land until such time that there was adequate parking uh, replaced in the community. So um, that we have our word on is moving forward. I think fair to say that I don't think anybody at this table is looking to reduce the opportunity for people to park their vehicles and take an alternative form of transportation that helps to lessen the congestion on our roads. Is there anybody else? Uh, we have a mover and secor, so all those in favor? Opposed? Duly noted, thank you. Uh, motion carries. Uh, moving forward to 7.3, Item num or bylaw number 1718 for first, second, and third readings. This is Colwood Main Sewer Local Area Service Bylaw and Establishment Loan Authorization number 598, 2001. Move introduction. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Move second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, finally, on our agenda, bylaw number 1700, review report, consider first reading only, and this one will fall to Councillor Nault, have been uh, on the OCP steering committee. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, about a year and a half ago, Colwood uh, Council punished me by appointing me chair of this committee. Uh, <laughs> We have been reviewing public input, holding meetings, uh, both public and council and staff and developers for a year and a half. Uh, if you read the, the stats in the report, the OCP, you'll find that probably more people have had input into this OCP than voted in the last civic election. Just to put things in perspective. Okay, so the OCP has been developed through Colwood's most extensive public engagement in its history. This engagement has clear, clearly committed, communicated a form, character, and vision that set Colwood apart from all other communities in the region. Why is this important? First and foremost, it provides a sense of pride and certainty for Colwood residents. 
Second, it's a vital step in the economic development of Colwood, clarity for developers and businesses. What is unique about Colwood in today's market? What can we offer that other communities cannot? Colwood citizens have answered these questions. Now the city needs to follow through and act to reach our potential. Through my time on council, we have been regularly heard, Langford does it differently, or why can't Colwood be more like Langford? The input from this OCP process says loud and clear, we are not Langford and we do not want to be Langford. Colwood has fantastic assets that set it apart from all of the other communities in the CRD. All of Colwood's previous official community plans tell the same story about what is important to Colwood residents. Colwood has been blessed with natural treasures that have throughout the past 30 years been at the forefront front of the values held important by our community, the nat natural environment. Unfortunately, though there have been commitments in all the OCPs to things like environmental stewardship, smart growth, and retention of green spaces that are also highly valued by Colwood residents, Colwood has fallen far short of meeting these lofty goals. Let me illustrate. I have selected four developments to show how we have been managing these commitments. If you could put the pictures on. You ran out of signal. And I picked these out quickly on, uh, yep, with Google Earth and uh, the uh, CRD maps. Uh, they're not to particularly single out any single development, but I want to illustrate how we are. No, nothing up. up there yet. Check your link because it had no link, the, the little notice thing. Mouse is working. I can no. see your pointer moving around, but nothing's. Have you got file open? Shouldn't be hard. It's just a JPEG. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just slow. Do you guys get to see anything up there? <laughs> no? <laughs> well, they everybody shut down their Wi-Fi devices, sucking up power. Well, it, yeah, it, it came up with a lost connection on there, so I think that that's, that's just. Sorry about the delay. Uh, I guess I can take this opportunity to thank anybody in the audience in Colwood that has participated in this. Uh, the staff has put in an awful lot of time. Our consultants have put in a lot of time. Uh, Do you see what you're getting? We are not finished yet. This is only first reading. This is council's first chance to say, yeah, that's kind of the direction we want to go. Uh, there will be more committee meetings. There will be second reading. There will be public hearings and all before this is finally adopted. So you still all have opportunity for, for more input. Interpretive dance. Yeah. Oh, 
Here's, here comes the tech oh. guy. Get that tech guy in here. He walked across the room. <laughs> you it's gone it again. You <laughs> You're saying drag it all the way over. Yeah, please come. Now make it big. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we can live with this. This is uh, development at Latoria and Byzantin. The top photo shows the site in 2000, the bottom 2017. Note the almost total loss of all vegetation from this development site. This is the way we have been managing things. Next picture, please. <laughs> took us this long to get yeah. one picture. <laughs> okay. This is the northwest corner of Royal Bay. Again, this is from 2013 to 2015. <coughs> Total loss of all of the trees in that area. <coughs> and I don't know for what reason uh, the new OCP would try to at least save some of those. Next picture. We have Veterans Memorial Parkway at Allendale. Again, development lot totally denuded. Mm -hmm. And finally, development on Wishart Road adjacent to our city park. Again, every single piece of greenery has been stripped off of that. Thank you. So my point on these pictures is that an OCP is only as good as this council's commitment to follow it. We had good stuff in the other OCPs, and we didn't really follow them. Uh, hopefully, this time we can. In the coming weeks, 33 years after incorporation, council is considering college's fourth official community plan. We undertook a public engagement strategy like no other in Colwood history, to clearly define who Colwood is and determine whether those, uh, those same values reflected within the three OCPs remain or if something has changed in the community. The message is consistent. We are a unique, distinctive community in the West Shore and we value those characteristics that make us so. <coughs> the draft OCP is consistent with Colwood's three previous OCPs from the policy and goals perspective. It is now up to Council to endorse this vision as expressed in the OCP and to have the will to follow through on that vision. The people have spoken. Are we listening? Your Worship, <coughs> uh, apologies for this, um, but we caught a, uh, a couple typos uh, over the weekend, um, there's two pages that I handed out. Um, number one is page 148, and then um, number two is page 144. The highlighted uh, text uh, is meant to be the text that replaces the um, uh, text with a red cross, uh, crossed out in red. Um, it's just the, the portions that were meant to be replaced were not deleted, and um, the staff would just ask that... Uh, this be the version that is uh, considered for first reading. Um, the version on the website has these corrections made. We've also tried to make them to the uh, um, hard copy handouts. It's just that the version that was uh, appended to the um, agenda didn't have those, those edits made. So just to be clear, there were a number of copies that were on the table for public to pick up from. The corrections have been made in those printed? Yeah, mm -hmm. page 148, the, I think we actually um, stuck the correct wording over top of the... Uh, yeah, that, that's wording. in my printed yeah. one here, but yeah. I'm just wondering about the, s the other ones that were printed. I believe so, yeah. Okay, yeah. so um, if anyone who has a copy has any uh, concern, you can check your page 144 and 148, and I'm sure our communications director will have the corrected page uh, notations up there for you. They're minor in nature. Um, page... 
144 is section U has been removed and under conservation of coastal sediment processes, wording the development of docks and watercraft launching sites is not permitted in the Esquimalt Lagoon Migratory Bird Sanctuary has been uh, added to it. And then on page 148 under hillsides, section A has been removed. And just above that, uh, where it reads, the following guidelines apply in areas identified. The following wording, the following design guidelines are intended to complement a site adaptive planning approach to minimize ecosystem disturbance and protect open space and wildlife corridors. So, uh, and if in your reading you have anything that comes up of question, this is the draft one official. Uh, yes, Peter. And uh, we are uh, looking for that. If you have any questions or concerns, send them through to staff. I think that number's been provided out there. So with that, uh, looking for consideration of first reading. Seconder? Any discussion, council? Seeing none, all those in uh, one backing up, slowing down. Sorry, just um, I, I was just taken aback because uh, I thought the director of planning had done a really excellent job uh, of uh, writing the report, summarizing a number of the changes that are, that are in there, um, and he didn't speak to it at all tonight. So I just wondered if he wanted to speak to it before we voted. Uh, Your Worship, I always take an opportunity to speak. Um, I, th I think the, uh, I can't take credit for writing the report that was, um, the report was compiled by um, uh, Catherine Lecision, our, our planner that's been uh, on the ground managing the, uh, the project. Um, I think uh, this report speaks for itself in terms of staff being very pleased to bring this forward to council. Uh, it has been a long road and um, we've literally had thousands of, of pieces of input. Um, so a big thanks to our communication manager for um, conducting what has been the finest example of public engagement that I've, I've been involved in. Um, the table of um, edits, uh, we tried to make it as uh, complete and um, understandable as possible. We broke it out into five different categories in terms of the uh, why the edits were made, um, trying to be as transparent as possible as the diff why the, there is a difference between the um, first and second drafts. So um, with that, I would, uh, I would conclude my introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Dates. Thank you. Uh, I think it has been a, a huge body of work and Councillor Nault did a very um, good job both of uh, chairing the committee um, and uh, with an innovative new approach that uh, whoever showed up had, had a vote around that table in terms of how um, uh, how we proceeded from that point forward. Uh, I think it has made a, uh, it's very much surprised me that so uh, many people in Colwood uh, have been willing to um, step up and be involved. And again, that does um, speak greatly to our Director of Communications and her um, methodology of being anywhere and everywhere that the community was over the last year. Um, but I also have said, uh, and I will stand by it, that now um, it's very important that we take that community input and act on it uh, because um, the community has stepped up before and given input, very similar input, and uh, it hasn't always been acted on. Uh, in fact, um, I, I would say I had almost lost all faith in our official community plan process before we uh, did this one. Um, the community itself has actually restored my faith in that process. So I hope that um, we can live up to the promise uh, that this plan brings. Thank you. Anyone else? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. And before we adjourn from here, I did promise those folks in the audience, if there was anyone else that had anything to say, we can resume public participation for a few minutes and hear what you have to say. Is there anyone?
Hello, my name is Andrew Weitzel. I actually don't live in the city of Colwood. I live in the Bear Mountain area. But I had to ask myself, you know, was I, you know, warranted coming here? But uh, this is in relation to the park and ride, and I use a lot of Colwood's services on my way home from work. Uh, so I felt that I may as well come and, and put my two cents in. I don't think that what we have here in Colwood uh, is a doctor shortage. I think what we have here, or sorry, what we what we have here is a clinic shortage. It's a doctor shortage. It's hard to harder to get doctors out here. My wife has waited for care uh, a number of times, uh, and we still don't even have a family doctor anywhere on the West Shore. With that said, as well, I I didn't even know that this uh, this had occurred or that you were thinking of uh, changing the bylaw for it. I had to find out from a sign that was posted last week outside of the park and ride area and um, I was very taken aback noting that uh, once I also saw the flyer on my car that there was a council meeting tonight, I thought it nice to be able to address uh, the council. Um, in addition to that, when you move to pass this bylaw, is, does, does that not take a lot of the control away from us of the public? Isn't that why we're going through all of this is for the public consultation? Um, you've given us your word that you will not move forward with this proposal uh, until there's another spot found. Why is it that we have to move forward with the bylaw when we don't have a spot already available? When you find the spot, I think that would be a very good time to bring up the proposal to change the bylaw at that time. Um, other than that, I love the city of Colwood. I come out here all the time. Uh, I bring my dog down for the lagoon and you guys have an absolutely beautiful area, and I wouldn't want you to be like Langford either. I think that it's wonderful <laughs> out here. Cheers, thank you. Thank you. We'll let the gentleman up there, Desiree, if you don't mind, and then you can. Yeah, Mayor, members of council, my name is Jim McLaren. I'm a, I'm a builder and developer in the city of Victoria and in the mun municipality of Colwood. I think this is a good report, uh, probably contrary to a lot of my builders sitting behind me, they'll be wondering who's going to pay for it. And I would just ask you to find a way of not to stick it in the developer's ear over the, over, over the charges, over the cost it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost to do this. I think we can do it. I think it's a, it's, it's a good report and I, I like a lot of the things in it, like the, like the, the heritage preservation. We're trying to do this up on, on, on Goldstream Avenue. I think we're going to be excess of it, make it a success, but it's going to be a very, very expensive issue to do that. Uh, similarly with the parking, I think that's, I came here thinking that I was going to be on the agenda tonight with respect to reducing the, in, into small car parkings into the development. That's one way this council can do something to impact, impact the pollution in the, in, in the atmosphere and try and save the planet. I think we all need to have smaller cars. We all need, maybe we all have to have electric cars, but I think we have to, and I think council can do that in their, in their zoning process. We have right now a situation where it's all large cars. And I think if you could, you could say certain, certain numbers have to be small cars, I think that will force people into, into buying new uh, smaller cars. I think there's a lot of things we can do to sort of make that happen, it's not going to be a costly affair. And I look to you for you, for some wisdom to how we do that, because I'm with you, I think it's a good report, and I think we, we can all, all look forward to making the municipality a better place to live. Thank you. Thank you. Desiree? Um, just a couple questions, or concerns, I guess. One of the concerns I have about your promise to find alternate parking is that uh, the promise for alternate parking is not necessarily as convenient alternate parking. And also, uh, just because something's working isn't a good excuse to, oh, well, we'll get rid of it, but we'll just put it somewhere else. Let's have two parking rides. I mean, we have something that's really working for the community. And so, um, to say, well, we're looking to uh, move it somewhere else. Uh, there's no guarantee that that will be as convenient. And let's get another one. Because obviously, this is used so well that they're parking along Ocean Boulevard. Let's put in another parking ride. I don't think that 
the idea is that, well, we can get rid of this one if we get another one. I don't think that's actually productive, and it's not necessarily the answer. No. Thank you. Anybody else? Going once. Any further comments? Going twice. And for the last time, then we will conclude our meeting. Looking for adjournment. Oh. Whoops, you got something you're. There's a release of in-camera. Re oh yes, one account. item to release. One item to release. Hang on, I'm uh, looking for the <laughs> second. So the uh, the release is um, regarding the. Um, I'm just trying to think how to Pardon? Sorry? Well, Marcia said it's to proceed with the um, yeah. report. You got to back up. It, you have the wording. Yep. And then this one. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So that. Excuse me for just a moment, folks. We're just one minor. Bit. Go ahead. So the motion that we've released from in camera uh, this evening is to consider uh, that Colwood will spend up to seven thousand dollars to contribute to a Huggett report as part of the governance model review for Worcester Parks and Rec. And seconder on that release. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Now. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Now we're done, folks. Thank you.